towards the end it, it all happened so fast. The Medusa's sickness crept in quiet, slowly, and by the time we all noticed it, it was much too late. Our fingers were pointed at climate change, impending nuclear war, SARS, yeah, bird flu, H1N1. Plan. But our concerns were merely a distraction in hindsight. Tsunamis, the floods, the superstorm, although more frequent, we could all recover from. The Medusa sickness was irreversible. The Medusa sickness was a plague that infected us long ago. At first, it was a guest invited into our homes. But unlike the mythological serpent queen, Amira's reflection could not have stopped its infection, nor turned it to stone. But we could have stopped it. We could have turned our backs. But why would we have wanted to? The Medusa sickness was fun, exciting, wonderful. The Medusa sickness was entertainment. Its hosts, our One, television, and we sustained its survival. We fed it our time, and it fed us our dreams, our insecurities, our foundations of existence. We, as they say, were amusing ourselves to death. The internet was hailed as a new communication utopia. Words like free internet and liberal democracy resonated out as we became unconstrained by old communication models. Social networking, video sharing, and talk of mass collaboration were wax lyrical online by media theorists. The extolment of an all-benevolent internet deafened the fears that our culture was being homogenized to a level of mass passivity. The Medusa sickness came in three waves. Advertisements in the 40s found new ways of advertising their products, whilst helping to build an industry based on mass sedation. Fame engineered idolatry. Idolatry sated our voyeuristic compulsions. The visual spectacle took over, and we grew as a culture where context became relevant. Our daily lives were cluttered with concerns of the world news. By the 90s, television had successfully diluted our culture to the singular genre of entertainment. TV became the new oracle and the entertainment industry began to shape a collective mainstream culture by telling us what to buy, how to dress, and what to think. By the second wave of the sickness, Brilliant. entertainment had become the natural format for all experience. The people were given a false sense of empowerment as ad-skipping, time-shifting devices like TiVo spurred the talk of the end of television. Web prophets spoke of the splintering of the mainstream into the web's infinite virtual space, where niche content filled the long tail and made the time-scarce broadcast model of television irrelevant. The wider debates of piracy and copyright over shadowed the culturally homogenizing government strategies of using entertainment to weaken us. It soon became obvious that much of the technology being put into place to deliver broadband internet, digital TV and mobile services was there to serve the needs of marketing. High speed broadband and rich media were put into place for new areas of advertising real estate. This convergence to the web was slowly undoing our capacity to think. The third wave was tidal. In the sinks they called it the blackness. Don't know why, because it was our grey matter that suffered. There was so much information. Eventually parts of our brain started shutting down. You know, the bits that make us rational? The signs? The rapid shifting of tasks made it impossible for us to focus on anything for more than a few seconds. People began to lose their grips as reality became severely augmented. Once we began to notice the effects, switching off just wasn't an option. The web was already an opiate to the collective unconscious, and most of us were addicted. Those who remained online turned the fastest. The lucky ones became unresponsive. Responsive, brain dead, the medullars as we called them. It was the dalas that suffered the most. They experienced round the clock trauma. It was the amygdala which controls fear and it wouldn't switch off. Once the screen started, it just didn't stop. Then there were the hypos, the psychopathic, the ones with the dodgy hypothalamus, the ones to look out for. The hypos moved in packs and attacked without reason. Riots increased as swarms of them grew and overtook the cities, killing hundreds of thousands. It wasn't long before the global economy collapsed. There was too many infected to sustain order or production. And the Food quickly became scarce. Digital activists intervened, sustaining control of many utilities. But before long, they too were divided. Vital civic systems were infiltrated. Mistakes happened. Dams opened up and flooded major cities. Millions perished. Power began to shut down across the globe, causing mass diaspora and forcing the destitute back into tribalization. Camps became sinkholes. Petrol became the new currency as everyone fought to get out. Only thing was, nobody knew where they were going. 